Greetings, this is Preacher Rick with you one more time with the Word of God and a sermon from God's Word. A search, there, there is a way that seems right. A way that seems right is actually the title of my sermon today. And there is a way that seems right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that's very important for us to latch on to that. I heard an old preacher say years ago, it's easier uh, to save a, a real bad person than it is a good moral person. And uh, I found that it's it's hard to get people it's harder to get people lost than it is to get them saved, uh, because once a person realizes they're lost, uh, that's when they'll get saved. You have to realize you're lost. I've shared this before in another sermon here on the the broadcast, but uh, but I'll say it again: uh, if you're out in the woods and you know where you're at and you have a set of walkie-talkies, I know that's that's kind of rare today, but uh, just the same, they work where there's no cell phone signals. And you had a set of walkie-talkies, and you knew where you was at. You would not get on those walkie-talkies and cry out for help. But if it started getting dark, and all of a sudden you didn't recognize the path, and you realized you were in danger, and there were wild bears and the cougars and things of that nature in those woods, and you didn't have a flashlight, and you had those walkie-talkies, I guarantee you, you'd get on those walkie-talkies and cry out for help, wouldn't you? I, don't, I, I know you know that. So would I. Uh, who wouldn't? Well, you see, uh, what if you were lost uh, way back when it was daylight, and you just thought you was on the right path? And you didn't cry out for help because you didn't realize you were lost. And that's where a lot of people are. They don't realize they're lost. It's harder to get them lost than it is to get them saved because if you, once you get them lost, then there's a good opportunity to get them saved. You have to realize you're lost. And without Jesus Christ, you are lost. There's a way that seems right. Uh, here in America, especially, I've noticed that every good moral person, you know what the old saying is, good old boys, that dies, they all, everyone says, well, they're better off. In the background in my mind, I don't say anything. I just think, well, if they know Jesus, they're better off. But if they're not saved, they're by no means better off. They just jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. And I tell you, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And everybody in America seems to believe if you're not a murderer or some uh, mass killer or uh, something real, real extremely bad, why uh, God understands and you're good. Well, if we were good enough to go to heaven, uh, well, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. That would have all been in vain. But we were all, we're all in sin, and if we die in sin, we're going to be resurrected in sin. And that means brought back to life, uh, feeling, just like the man in Luke 16 I've mentioned several times. Uh, he died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. That's not a parable. That's a true story. Read it. It's in Luke 16. But now let's get to the Scripture. Proverbs 16.25 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. You remember I've mentioned to you, if you've been listening to us any amount of time, that when God says something two or three times, he's putting emphasis on it for a special reason. Well, if you go back in Proverbs, just a chapter or so back, uh, that's Proverbs 16.25. If you go back to 14.12, uh, it says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, I wonder why God inserted that right in the middle of both those chapters. I'll tell you why. Because uh, in the wisdom of Proverbs, he wanted to catch your attention early on and later on. Uh, he wants you to realize uh, uh, that sometimes people think they're right, uh, but they're not. Uh, uh, they're exactly wrong. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. In 1215 uh, in Proverbs, if you go back there, uh, it says uh, uh, that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. And, uh, you know, we're not to call each other fools, but if God calls you a fool, that's a different thing. The Bible says uh, uh, plainly that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Uh, and, and we read to you yesterday that God decided to use preaching to save the world, uh, uh, and he chose the foolishness of preaching, the Bible says, to save the world. Uh, and through the preaching of the gospel, there's wise counsel to be had. Uh, God will save you through the preaching of his word. Uh, thank God if you'll just take heed. Uh, and I, I thought on these things. Uh, well, then 
then I got to thinking about of another scripture over in John 5, 30, 39, St. John, chapter 5 and verse 39. And it's the words of red as Jesus talking, and he's been preaching for a while here. Uh, it's the same chapter. Uh, if you look at this chapter where uh, he healed a man and the uh, old Pharisees, while well, they uh, uh, they said that, as far in their eyes, he broke the Sabbath, so they uh, uh, they absolutely wanted to get him killed. They couldn't stand him, uh, uh, and so that's the same he, the same sermon he's preaching there. Uh, and if you go to five uh, thirty nine, here's what he said to him. He said, "Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life." Uh, uh, anybody you can ask if they believe the Bible to be the Word of God, uh, uh, they better take heed because the Word of God is uh, the Bible. It's a uh, uh, Plain as the nose on all of our faces, uh, thank God. And Jesus told him uh, uh, in those scriptures. But the reason he said it the way he did, he was talking to the uh, uh, scribes and the Pharisees, ones that knew the Bible, uh, the Old Testament. He said, search those scriptures. He said, uh, uh, and, th and that same goes for you and I today. We need to search the scriptures, uh, of course, because we believe uh, the Bible to be the word of God, which it is. Uh, and they did too. And he said, well, you search the scriptures, uh, cause for in them you think you have eternal life. Uh, uh, now, that's a pretty strong statement. You think you have. Uh, and he said, they are, uh, uh, and they are they which testify of me. So he was telling them, he said, uh, uh, you think you have eternal life, but if you don't have me, you don't have eternal life. Uh, why? Because he is the only begotten Son of God. Uh, and he said, uh, and you will not come to me that you might have life, uh, uh, talking to them. Uh, and it speaks to us as well today. If, uh, if you know you're lost, uh, if you come to the place that you know you're lost, you're like that boy walk or girl walking in the woods uh, that's lost their way and realize it. Uh, it's time to get on your walkie-talkie, uh, and it's time to uh, call out out to God uh, uh, because uh, uh, our ways are not God's ways. Uh, the Bible says his ways is, are far above our ways as the heaven is above the earth. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there's folks out there today, and I know we all have loved ones, friends, and neighbors uh, that need to be saved. Uh, uh, let's get them lost first. Uh, uh, help them to see uh, uh, that uh, being a good old boy won't save them. Uh, uh, being a good moral person as bad as we hate uh, uh, to see a good moral person die lost and even talk about it uh, it's really hard but I've seen it, and I'm sure you have too, you Christians out there. Uh, they're not the type of person that, you, that would tell you a lie. Uh, uh, they'd give you the shirt off their back. Uh, uh, they're, they're just as nice as they can be, uh, uh, but they don't know Jesus and the pardon and remission of sin. Uh, and without Jesus, we're all lost. Uh, uh, the Bible plainly teaches, except we all repent, uh, we shall likewise perish. Uh, I've shared this before, and I'll share it again today. Uh, I uh, remember talking a lot about uh, that. Qu the question, uh, how could you perish and go to hell? Well, here's how it works. Uh, I've used the example. God gave me the, this example when I was a young man. Uh, here's what he means. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if you're in space, uh, which most of us will never, uh, probably I'm sure no one I'm ever speaking to will be there, uh, in a space capsule, uh, uh, and you were uh, uh, given, uh, provided all the goods you would need to sustain your life uh, till till you died. Uh, uh, you could grow your own food. You had enough water to recycle. Uh, yeah, you had a way of keeping the air uh, and replenishing the oxygen and so on and so forth. Uh, and and uh, uh, you were in space and in contact with what we would call Houston or uh, uh, Florida, you, you know, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and you could talk to them and they would guide you. And all of a sudden, uh, you lost all contact to earth and you soared on into outer space uh, uh, until the day you die but you never was able to return to earth uh, and you never was able to contact Houston again you would have perished from what? the earth and from contact with everybody there and that's what it means you wouldn't have died you had everything to sustain life and the Bible says perish Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, that means perish from this earth 
and perish from God's presence, but you'll still exist. And the Bible teaches there's only a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And it's the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of knowledge. It's the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom. So if you want to wise up and not go down the wrong path, if you want to wise up and realize uh, that uh, uh, our ways are not God's way, there's a way that seemeth right. Yeah, it seems right to be a good person, and we should be good people. But with none of us, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to realize that today, and you need to understand what God is telling us and why he put the double emphasis on it here in the book of Proverbs, the old wise book. There is a way that seemeth right. It seems right for when a good person, for a, a person that would never hurt a flea, as the old saying is. A person who would never cheat, cheat you out of your money, would never steal, would never kill a person, would never hurt a person, would, as I said earlier, give this shirt off your back and they die. There's no way you want to think they went to hell. But I'm going to be frank. Whether we think it or not, what we think doesn't matter. What God says is what matters. And we need to realize that. And hide that in our heart. And then you as an individual, you're one of those good old boys. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you're a good person. I'm, I'm always glad to see anybody that has a good heart uh, and does good for other people and cares about their fellow man. But that's not enough when you draw your last breath. And take heed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And there is a second death. We die in the flesh, then we die in our soul. And when our soul dies, it doesn't cease to exist. It perishes from God's presence and from the hope of eternal life. This is Preacher Rick. I know it's a stirring message. I know it's not a fireball message, but it's the Word of God. And it will save to the uttermost as many as will come unto Christ. Jesus loves you. He'll save you. If you'll just put your faith in him and at the foot of his cross where he shed his blood for you to be born into the family of God. That's why it's called born again. You start life anew. This is Preacher Rick. Until next time, beloved, God bless you. Push the share button if you possibly can and get it out to as many as you can. Bye-bye. God bless.